Math 43, I just wanted us to take a look at an applet that might help solidify this, this idea of sampling distributions for averages. So we've just worked through four problems where we were looking at sampling distributions for averages, where we went from our population distribution, right, where we had x labeled on the x-axis, and now in chapter 7 we're creating these new graphs or we have x bar labeled on the x-axis. So we're going to start to graph averages. And I think initially that idea, that concept, like what on earth is happening, can be really confusing in the beginning. So hopefully this applet will just help us get a better visual for what's going on. So there's the link to this website in your lecture notes, but let's, let's play it out. So if you look at the top here, it talks about your parent population, or what we've been calling our population distribution. And you can see it's the bell curve. Right, so this is a chapter 6 graph, at least up top there. It would have x labeled on the x-axis. Just taking a look, it looks like our spread is from about an x value of 2 to maybe 30. Right? And this is nice and symmetric, so halfway between that would be the number 16. And you can see that confirmed over here. Right? It's saying the mean is 16. It also tells us the median is 16, so that is exactly symmetric. And our standard deviation is about 5. And that's holding consistent with what we know. We know that the x-axis usually has about six standard deviations in it. Um, and if you would do six times five, this has got a spread close-ish to 30, a little bit less right now, but it's good enough um, for just looking at this, this example. So what we're going to do is from this population, we're going to draw all sorts of samples of different sizes. So let's start, we'll do two and five to start. Let me put this to mean. We'll go 2 and 5 to start. And then I want to keep track of everything over here on this table so that we can start to see patterns as we go through this. So I'm going to animate for a moment. And you're going to see the, the sample data pop down here on this second axis. And then the, the sampling distributions that we're going to create are going to be on, on these bottom twos, bottom two graphs, excuse me. So we're going to have averages down here for sample sizes of 2. We're going to have averages from sample sizes of 5 here. So x bar would be the label on these bottom two axes. So where x is the top, right, it's the population distribution, we're going to create two x bar graphs, two x bar distributions, or we could say two sampling distributions. So let's go ahead and animate. Um, this tends to take a little while because they're actually showing everything. Um, Right now we only have samples of 2 and 5, so it won't take as long, but you can see over here we're going to bump up to 10 and 25. That'll take a little longer. So watch what happens. I'll do this a few times. I'm going to animate. You see it took a random sample of 2 and dropped an x-bar here. And then you can see, even though it's fast, this got five observations from our population proportion. And the average was, if you look, you have 3 here, 2 here. The average was right around this, this x-value, and you see it dropped an x-bar down here. So let's animate it again. All right, one, two, here comes the x bar, here comes five observations, and then they drop down the x bar, right? That x bar, you can see it was right around here. Let me animate this again, and I know it goes quickly. There's two, they'll drop an x bar. Right? There's five, it'll drop an x bar. I like to play a game with myself and guess the x bar. You gotta be a little fast to do it, but one, two, I think the x bar is here, right? Uh, I think the x bar is there, and I'm not too far off, right? Let me animate it again. One, two, the x bar is there and the x-bar is here. So something like that. Now I could do this forever, but let me speed this up a bit. So let me do 10,000 of them, and you can see all of the x-bars here. Let me even do 100,000, and you can see all of the x-bars. So let's keep track of what was happening for this particular version. So I write over here, we want to do the socks for the graphs of the x-bars, so the sampling distribution of the x-bars, keeping in mind that we started with a normal population distribution. All right, so we're only going to fill in these first two rows because I've done it for random samples of size 2 and random samples of size 4. But let's talk about the shapes on these. So you'll see we, we have an approximately normal distribution here and approximately normal there. I could even put the bell curve on here if I wanted. So let me head over here and type that in. This one was approximately normal. Okay, and I'm going to copy and paste that here, just so we're keeping track of some ideas. All right, the next thing is I want to look at the centers. So when we look at the centers, you could look at mean or median. Typically with normal curves, we look at the mean. So you can see the mean here was 16, and the mean here was also 16. So let's take note of that, 16. 
and let me copy and paste that over in 16. And I'll be specific, I'll actually, let me do 0 .00 because that's the number they're showing. Okay. Now, in terms of the standard deviation, keep in mind we started with five. That was our population distribution. All right, this sampling distribution's standard deviation, or something we will call the standard error, is 3.52, and this one's even smaller at 2.23. So let me just take note of that. So we had 3.52 and 2.23. Okay, so we got all of that. Let's now try this for when n is 10 and when n is 25. So I'm going to clear everything out. I'm going to keep the normal distribution for my population, and we're going to bump this to 10 and 25. Now when I animate, it's going to take that much longer because it's going to get a random sample of 10 fit an X bar and a random sample of 25 fit an X bar. But let's try this. Here goes the 10, and I'm going to play my game. I feel like the average is right, right about there. So that one went low, but still. Average is, no, nope, here, here. Yeah, it looks like it's right about here when it drops. Yep. And then I could, I'll could i do this one more time, and then we'll just kind of speed through. So here's my 10. I feel like the average is right around there. Average. I just moved my mouse to kind of keep track of the average. I feel like, yeah, it's been a little bit lower. Yeah. Okay. So let me bump this up to 100,000. All right. And you can see the bell curve's pretty much... Um, showing up there. So I would say this is approximately normal okay. in terms of its shape. Let's see what the averages are. So it looks like the average is staying tight at 16. Oops. I must not hit control C. There we go. All right. And now let's take a look. We got 1.58 and 1 specifically. So we got 1.58 and we've got 1. All right, so overall, let's look at this trend and see how it lines up with example one. So in example one, when we were talking about platelet sizes, we had that normal population distribution. And you can see that regardless of the sample size, whether it was 2, 5, 10, or 25, the shapes were all approximately normal. All right, another trend we're seeing is that the means stayed the same and the standard deviations got smaller. And they got smaller by that formula, right? We'd have the original population distribution, excuse me, the original population standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. And let me just call up my calculator for a moment, give it a, a moment to start up. Let's hope it actually does. Yeah, let me move this over here. All right, and here's what I, let me clear all of this out. So what I wanna reference here is let's test these numbers with just the two that we have right here. So my original standard deviation, my population standard deviation was five. Let's divide that by the square root of 10 and see how close we're getting. All right, when I take five and divide by the square root of 10, look at that, 1.58, and that was the standard deviation for my sampling distribution. Let's try it for this graph. Let's do, what was our original standard deviation? Five, and I wanna divide it by the square root of n, and our n for this second sampling distribution was 25. And when I divide that out, we get 1. So that's where these numbers are coming from. Right? We have formulas governing all of this. So again, the mean stayed the same, but the standard deviation shrunk. And the formula for that is your original standard deviation from your population distribution, your original sigma, divided by the square root of your sample size. Okay. So let's try this. I want to I wanna rework this, but now let's start with the uniform distribution. So I'm going to clear this out, and I'm going to start with the uniform distribution. And we're going to go through these same four sample sizes and see what happens. Now, again, I'm starting with a perfectly symmetric graph. You see the mean and median are the same, and the standard deviation is actually a little bit larger. To start out with, it's not 5 anymore. It's 9.52. Um, I don't know. Th that happened the last time, so let me just restart this and go to uniform. I don't know why sometimes when I drag my mouse over it, it changes the population distribution. All right, so let's go with two against five and see what's happening. So I'm gonna animate this. There's my random sample of two and an X bar dropped. Random sample of five and an X bar dropped. Right, random sample of two, there's an X bar. Random sample of five, I feel like my X bar is there. Do it one more time. Random sample of two, X bar. Ooh, random sample of five, X bar. All right, let's do this 100,000 times, okay? Now, let's talk about 
shape, center, and spread. All right, the shape for this, it's not really belly yet. I mean, it's, it's close enough, but it's not quite there. But I would say this is still roughly symmetric. So I'm gonna put roughly symmetric here, okay? And here we're getting even closer to approximately normal, right? If I put that bell curve, it's looking pretty good. Now, if you remember from the rules about sampling distributions, we are not guaranteed normality until the sample size is 30 or higher. So I'm gonna put here, it's close to approximately normal. Okay, so let's keep that in mind, that it's pretty close, not guaranteed, because the sample size hasn't hit 30 or higher, and my population distribution was not normal, it was uniform. But let's take a look at the centers. So my population center was 16, it looks like my sampling distribution center here is 15.97, so pretty darn close to 16. And here it looks like the mean is 15.98. So again, pretty darn close to, to the mean of my population distribution. Let's look at the standard deviation. We've got 6.75 for the standard error here and 4.26 for the standard error here. And when you hear me say the phrase standard error, it means the sampling distribution standard deviation. I know that's a lot of words, but I just want us to start to hear that vocab so it becomes more and more familiar. All right, let's bump this up to 10 and 25 and see what happens. So let me change this to n equaling 10 and n equaling 25. And I want you to start to think, before I animate, what do we think these bottom six cells are gonna look like? What do you think the shape is gonna look like? Where do we think the center is gonna be? What do we think is about to happen to the standard deviation? Let's start to guess before I actually show. Guess what's about to happen. So let me animate a couple of these. And this will take it a little longer because we got a random sample of 10 and then I think the average was off. Let's see, random sample of 25. I think the average is like right around here. Yeah, not too bad. Now I'm gonna scooch through this faster and just do 100,000 of them. All right, we're getting even closer to a normal distribution, right? So I'm still gonna say close to normal. I can't say normal just yet because the central limit theorem has not kicked in. I can't say that until the sample size is 30 or higher. But you can see even down here, I am dangerously close to being approximately normal. All right, let's look at their averages. Here the mean was 16.01. So again, really close to that population average of 16, and it looks like here the mean was 15.99. All right, what happened to the standard errors? We've got 3.02 and 1.91. All right, and let's just see if the central limit theorem formula is, is close to working. And what I mean by that, we see from the central limit theorem, the centers are staying around the same, right? They're really close to whatever the population mean was. And these standard errors or these standard deviations from your sampling distribution, they are decreasing. So let's see if um, 1.9 works. Let's try this one. So if I was going to try this, let me clear this out. I would take my original population standard deviation and I would divide by the square root of my sample size. So let's test it out for 1.91. My sample size there was 25. So if I divide by the square root of 25, I get something pretty close to 1.91. Right? So that, that central limit theorem formula is working here. All right. So again, before we kick out of this one, right? this would have an x-axis label of x. These two would have x bars, right? because this was graphing the entire population. These are graphing averages. So we would have averages labeled here on the x-axis. Right, let's try it again. But now let's skew the population. So I'm going to clear this out and let's skew it. All right, and then let's go back to two and five. And I'm not going to go through the animate part this time because I want us um, to go through this a little faster. Now, let's look at the mean and median. You can see the mean is larger than the median because our distribution is skewed right. We've got a standard deviation of 6.22. Let me go ahead and take a look at this graph. Now I'm going to unfit the normals here. You can see that with averages of two, this graph is still skewed right, but it's less skewed right than the population distribution. Right? And when we look at averages of five, it's still skewed right, but it is less skewed right than when we did the sampling distribution for two 
or the population distribution. And that's consistent with what we were seeing with the NHL hockey games. So I'm going to put that this is skewed right, and then I'm just going to put a, a little, or I'll put less skewed right, all right, just so we can keep track of what's happening, right? So this was skewed right, this was a little bit less skewed right. Let's look at the averages. So it looks like the mean here was 8.08, .08. the mean here was 8.08. .08. And that's in line with the population mean. All right, so we're seeing the means are staying the same. Let's see, the population standard deviation was 6.22. We've got 4.39 here and 2.78. Okay, so we've got that. Now, again, I could calculate this on my calculator. So let's, let's see if the central limit theorem formula is working. So we would take our original standard deviation from our population and divide it by the square root of our sample size. So let's just try it with the 2.78. See the sample size there was 5. Let me divide by the square root of 5 and see how close we got. Pretty darn close, right? 2.78. Okay, so let me reduce that and now let's, let's bump these up to 10 and 25. So let me go to 10, 25, and again I'm going to just um, skip the animate and I'm going to go right to 100,000. So now you can see at 10 it's still a little bit skewed to the right. You can see the bell curve isn't completely fitting. But again, it is less skewed right than the population, and it's less skewed right than when we have the sampling distributions at 5 or 2. And this one is pretty darn close. And the reason it's close is because our sample size here is pretty close to 30. So I'm going to say close to approximately normal. We're getting really close. And then I'll even say here, like, this is closest to approximately normal. Like we're getting really, really close. Let's look at the averages. So I see 8.08 .08 and 8.08. .08, so that's the same thing that we had here. All right, and then we've got what 1.97 and 1.25. Okay. So with that, let's let's test a formula. Let's try it for the 25 um, samples of 25. Let me get my calculator up. All right, our original, let me clear this out, our original population standard deviation was 6.22, and I'm going to divide that by the square root of 25. All right, and this number here is called the standard error. And what do we get? Something real close to 1.25. Right? So again, that formula, you see that working. Okay. So the last one we're going to try with this applet is where you can just make your own population distribution. So let me clear these out. Custom. I'm going to make something super uggo, right? That, I don't even know what this is. That is ugly. It's not skewed. I don't even know if it's skewed right. It is actually skewed right if I look at it only because the mean is greater than the median, but that's pretty ugly. So let me do samples of two and five. I'm going to unfit the normals here. Let's see what happens. All right. So when I do this, you can see that when I only take averages of size 2, this is still super ugly. I'm just going to call it ugly. No, that is not a technical term, and I am okay with that. When I look at this graph, I'll say it's roughly symmetric. I mean, it's bordering on approximately normal already. Let's take a look at the centers. So it looks like my original average was 15.23. The average for this first sampling distribution was 15.2, and then 15.22. So 15.20 and 15.22, what were our standard errors? So 6.18 and 3.94. Okay. And again, we can see that the means are staying the same and the standard deviations are decreasing, right? As sample size increases, variability decreases. We love to say that phrase. It just means the standard deviation is getting smaller. All right, so looking at this, uh, let's let's go bump this up. Let's go to uh, we're gonna go 10 and 25. And I just want to fit the normal real quick before I go. So it's still a little bit skewed right, um, but it, it's it's still it's getting very close to being approximately normal at this point. All right, so let's go here. We'll bump this to 10 and 25 respectively, and let me go get 100,000 averages. All right, so wow, yeah, these are definitely looking approximately normal. Now, I can't say it's approximately normal because the central limit theorem hasn't kicked in, 
but it, it's it's looking pretty good, right? If I fit that normal curve, it's pretty good, right? If I fit the normal curve here, it's still pretty good. Keeping in mind, this graph up top always has the label of x on the x-axis, right? Just x, and this one is x bar, x bar. So this is we're graphing the population. This is we're graphing averages, graphing averages. All right, so let's take a look here. I'm saying close to approximately normal. Not there yet, okay? All right, and then we had 15.22. I can just drag that down. And this one was 15.23. Here we had, what, 2.78 and 1.76. Okay, and I just want to, let's try this again. Let's see if that formula is working. And I'll do it with the one with the sampling distribution for um, sample sizes of 25. So we've got to get 1.76, or we're going to get something close to it. Let's clear this out. Let's take my population standard deviation, divide it by the square root of my sample size, and I should get something pretty close to 1.76. There it is. Okay. So if we just take a quick step, step back at what we've done, okay, we initially started, let me push this back to where we started. We started with a, oh my goodness, why does it do that? All right, we started with a population distribution that was normal. And in that case, that was like example one, it didn't matter the sample size. All of my sampling distributions had the shape of a graph that was approximately normal, right? So it didn't matter if I had a sample size below 30, which both of these happen to be, um, I could still throw out the approximately normal. That is one way to get normality when you're looking at averages. The centers stay the same, the standard errors or the standard deviations of your sampling distribution all decreased and they decrease by that formula, sigma over square root n. All right, then we did it with a uniform distribution. That was the next one we went to, All right? And when I crunched that, again, the, the shape of these sampling distributions, they weren't necessarily approximately normal, right? That one right there, the one for two, sample sizes of two is just roughly symmetric. It doesn't really look like the bell curve. It's getting there, but it's not there yet. And then the rest of these got close to being approximately normal. And actually, I would just say this is even closer to being approximately normal. You see the centers all stay the same and the standard errors decrease by that formula, sigma over square root n. All right? We did it for when we had a skewed distribution. Right? When it was skewed and we looked at these averages, right? this first graph, this first sampling distribution, again, the one labeled x bar here, it was still skewed right, but not as skewed right as my population. Right, so skewed right, less skewed right, close to approximately normal, closest. Center stayed the same, standard errors decreased, right, by that formula of sigma over square root n. Then we did the same thing, but this time I made my own. I don't even remember what I did, but I remember I just made it super ugly, right, and you can have fun and do the same thing, right, and when you do that, you get a really ugly one when you're only looking at averages of two, and by the time you get to 25, it's, it's looking much closer to being approximately normal, right? But the centers stay the same and the standard errors decrease. And if you're looking here like, well, this says 14.73 and this said 15.22, that's because when I actually put this data in, I had a different graph up here. You can see the 14.73 actually matches the graph I currently have. All right, so there's your look into how we start to work through sampling distributions of averages, okay? All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about proportions, and uh, we'll come back to a different applet. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.